Hey everybody, thank you for checking out this video. Um, I'm really excited to share this information with you uh, because client experience is something that I think is really, really important, especially um, as a small business owner. Uh, your clients are your bread and butter when you run a service industry, uh, or excuse me, a service-based business. <laughs> um, and I'm really, really excited to have my friend Megan on. So I'm going to introduce Megan, but first I just want to remind everybody to um, download the bundle that I made to go along with this training. Um, it's got three things in it. One is the um, process roadmap, and that kind of helps you really develop your entire project process. Um, and it's kind of like 10 steps walking you through it, and then I give you examples, um, and it really helps you get clear on uh, how you work through your projects. Um, I've also got a checklist of 15 ideas that you can use um, in that process to really make your clients love working with you. So there's 15 ideas in that. We're gonna go over a few, um, but if you download that, you'll get a lot more. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is four canned emails that I wrote up for you that you can use and customize. Um, they are for when someone inquires about your services. That's such like an important time to make a good first impression. So I've got an email you can use for that. You just customize it. Um, another one is when projects get kicked off, it's a welcome email. And so that's important because you really just want to get your project started off on the right foot. Um, the third and fourth ones are all about helping you get paid faster. Um, so one is just a regular, like, here's your, here's your invoice reminder. You've got a payment due. And then the other one's what you could use if someone's late on payment, because I know that can be a really sticky, hairy, not fun situation that makes most people uncomfortable. So I wanted to give you an email that you could use where, you know, you sound, um, professional and like not angry. <laughs> um, and so Download that bundle to go with this kit. Um, okay, so let me introduce Megan. Megan is a wonderful human being <laughs> that I met through the internet late last year, I believe, and mm -hmm. we got to work on a project together earlier this year, and that was just so much fun. That was my first time getting to collaborate with another designer, um, something that I'd been craving to do, and Megan was just the perfect person to do that for the first time with. Um, so Megan, can you just tell everybody a little bit more about yourself, please? Yes. Okay. So besides my name, Megan, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, am, I am a Squarespace designer um, and also a branding designer. Um, I have been working for myself for almost a year and a half full-time for myself, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and when is the year for you? The year, I was on Easter, so April <gasps> was a year. Oh my gosh. Oh my we gosh. love Easter, right? You know what? Easter is like my fourth favorite holiday. Christmas and Fourth of July. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, it was, it was a good Easter. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was a fun way to celebrate, for sure. Um, but, yeah, no, I... I've been working in uh, design for gosh, over six years, almost seven years. So oh, wow, yeah, it's got a special place in my heart. Actually, what I love about Megan and why she's perfect to talk about um, client experience is because she's really good at making things seem so effortless and easy and clean. Um, so you're you're gonna love her approach to all of this stuff. Um, so let's just dive in. I think the first thing that we should talk about is why is client experience even important? Like, why should you care about delivering an amazing, excuse me, an amazing client experience? And the reason why I think that we should even talk about that is because I didn't really realize that <laughs> until, I don't know, a year or two in uh, to my business. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, these people are awesome. I should like really dedicate a lot more energy um, into the experience I'm providing for them. And when I did that, things changed completely in my business. So I think one of the most important reasons why you should focus on your client's experience is because it is a surefire way to stabilize your income. Um, I know for me, it's helped me book a lot more ongoing work 
and obviously um, those are bringing in referrals, but I want you to kind of talk about that more, Megan, um, too, because I know you have like some crazy stories with, and, you, and you're not like me, you don't like book, or, or you don't prefer to like keep working with the same client. Like you want that newness and that excitement. Um, and so that's like kind of the beautiful thing about this is um, it's, it's great for stabilizing your income in multiple ways. So let, will you tell everybody about the crazy story that you told me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, I didn't realize, I don't think I realized the importance of this until, mm -hmm. um, honestly, a few months ago. So, mm -hmm. so I started setting up like a very consistent workflow for all my clients. Um, and I had one particular client, this is, yeah, a few months ago, um, even in the beginning stages, like, like when we're just going over, you know, what's the mission of your business and like all the basic, she was so invested in my process and the reasoning behind my process that, um, I, she emailed me one night and she was saying she was going through her client homework and writing down the mission and the reason why she started her business and she started crying because it brought her back to, yeah, oh my gosh, I know it brought her back to the reason like why she started the business in the first place. Long story short, she, I get an email in my inbox the next day. She had, I haven't, e I hadn't even started the design process with her. She loved my process and my work so much that she had already referred one of her friends to me that friend ended up booking before I even sent out the first draft of her site, which is crazy. To That's me. so crazy. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, it's just so powerful what you can do when someone feels like you're kind of like pouring yourself into them and that you care about their business as much as you do and that you are like taking care of it. It's just really powerful what can happen from that. Mm -hmm. Especially because a lot of my clients will come to me that have tried to DIY their site before mm -hmm. or because I'm a firm believer that anybody can build their site. It's just mm -hmm. that if you want it to take it up a notch or you have specific pieces in there that you can't do it yourself or you want to take it from just a Squarespace template, like, oh, you know, your site's just on Squarespace to really stand out from the crowd. That's when you hire one of us. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I guess I lost my train of thought. I just got really excited. <laughs> you just got so excited about client experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's really great. I, I, people will ask me like, so how do you market yourself? Like, how do you find your clients? How do you mm. ever? And I can honestly say, I'm like, majority of it is word of mouth. And it, that's insane to me. Like, I don't put a lot of effort into marketing because I put so much of my effort into my client experience, mm -hmm. which is marketing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important to kind of realize that connection because I hate marketing <laughs> myself and I hate talking about um, my business, honestly. Um, and I hate the rat race of like social media. And it's like, oh, if you also hate all of those things, you can just like take care of your clients really well and have them help you get new business. And mm -hmm. this whole training is going to outline very like easy, actionable, tangible ways that you can do this. Yeah. Um, okay. So there are four steps that we're going to go over. And um, the first one's probably going to be the most detailed. Step one is get organized on your end and map out your workflow. Um, so for me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this um, or how you approach this, Megan, but for me, I kind of divide my um, projects into like stages or phases, um, and that kind of helps break down the whole project, especially if you're doing like website design. I feel like it can be so sticky and just like a lot going on, um, so many things to remember. So um, here are the stages. The first one is prep. That is before your, your client has booked, so they're, they're just a lead and they're interested in your services, everything that happens between them inquiring about your services and booking. Then the next stage is strategy, and that's where we really come up with like a game plan and add some substance and build that foundation 
um, for the project. Once that's done, we move to the design phase. Um, and that's just what you think it would be. Uh, my clients kind of get to like take a, a step back from the project and get to focus more on their business. And then I'm working behind the scenes doing the design. Uh, then we meet back up in the refined stage and get to like really mold whatever I presented to them into the finished product. And then the final stage is wrap up. And that is like all those tiny million details that you are kind of likely to forget because you're so tired of looking at your project. <laughs> and so I like to really outline all of those, like all the tiny details, because you obviously want to finish as strong as you started. So I'd love to hear like how you start your projects out. Um, mm -hmm. Do you kind of do something similar with those stages or? Yeah, I don't break them out that way. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't intentionally break them out that way, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's obviously how they fall. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I, the first thing I do is hop on a call with them. And actually, I don't know if I told you this. So um, I use, well, a while ago, it was sick of doing like the back and forth email. Like when's a good time mm -hmm. to schedule? Um, so I hopped on like an online scheduler. <clears throat> I used Calendly and I found out a few, well, maybe like two months ago, that Squarespace and Acuity scheduling, oh, you knew. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell everybody else. So, Squarespace and Well, you can say it, yeah. Yeah, have this, like, partnership now. Mm -hmm. So, normally, you can do Acuity scheduling, which is, again, like, you can integrate your calendar in it. So, if people, it'll, like, block out when you're not available, and you can set dates and stuff like that, or times when you're available. Um, and... Normally it's free. Well, you knew the free version, but you can't like brand it or do a ton of mm -hmm. customizations to it or whatever. But if you're a Squarespace user, it's free it's for like the paid version. Mm -hmm. How do you that? So I just that I was really like, cool. I save ten dollars a month. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I like oh. swiftly <laughs> use that integration. Oh so yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But so yeah, that's like a great thing for client experience because um you, you know, you can kind of present it as like, here's my avail availability and you can just pick a time that's convenient for you and it's mm -hmm. that less back and forth. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, not only is it better for the client, but it's less emails in your inbox, which mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so anyways, okay. So I hop on a call with them and then basically on that call is when I talk about, well, I have them talk to me and mm -hmm. I tell, you know, we figure out what they want in their business or on their site. Mm -hmm. um, to represent their business. Um, I typically will go through my process. So what they can expect from me, um, payment schedule. I always make sure on that client call that I give them, um, what their, what the price is. Like I, mm -hmm. I talk right away. Mm -hmm. Um, the only time I guess I don't is if they don't fall within like a standard one of my packages. So if they want something like super elaborate or something's going to take me way longer to build out like a feature or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, we go back and forth with questions. It's like a half hour typically. And mm -hmm. then I send a wrap up or like a recap email and next steps email later that day. Mm -hmm. So like I outline my process, um, my next availability, which I finally made this. I don't know why I didn't think about this, but like I made my 50%. So I do 50% deposit for my mm -hmm. projects. And I made that, like, you're, you are officially locked in my calendar when mm -hmm. that payment goes through, mm -hmm. which I didn't have before, which is stupid. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so that kind of puts the fire under people's butts. <laughs> like, if they have like a specific <laughs> launch by this time or whatever, or whatever works with their schedule, then mm -hmm. it kind of pushes them to sign. But, um, yeah, so I'll basically... Um, send them that recap email next steps and then I leave the ball in their court so that they mm -hmm. have to think about it if I don't hear from them in like a week I'll reach back out and just be like hey you know this is saying hi if you have any questions feel free to ask um, and then typically after that after like two weeks if I haven't heard from them I move them from like a warm lead to maybe not um, mm -hmm. but yeah never put um like a timeline on that, like, like, Hey, um, I can hold this date in my calendar for the next like seven days. Otherwise it becomes available to other people. Have you ever tried that? I never thought about that. No, I just, yeah, yeah because I've had, like, I, sometimes I inadvertently do it. Like I'll, I'll mm -hmm. last week I had five 
consultations. That's now in one day. That's Whoa. never. <laughs> Whoa. never and I was so overwhelmed by the potential of like my calendar being booked, which horrible problems. I know. Right. <laughs> but, but I was like, I don't want to, like, I, I had to put people in my calendar so that I could give people proper availability dates, if that made sense, because I don't want to tell everybody the same availability date. I, right. yeah. I mean, that's best slash worst case scenario, but you know, um, but no, I never thought about that. That's a really good idea. Just because then it like, adds a little bit of urgency and also like isn't an inconvenience to you if someone else comes along you know you don't owe this person who actually might not book with you anything (laughs) you know like why not give it to someone (laughs) yeah absolutely so say someone books with you that's what I would call and I know you're you add a lot of strategy and thought into your projects too so the next phase I would kind of call like the strategy phase someone Mm -hmm. books you haven't started designing yet. What's like one or two major milestones for you um, during that part of your project? It really is boiled down to one giant email. So, mm-hmm. and I tell them up front, I'm like, there's a lot of information in this email. Just like take it in bits, but um, it's basically my kickoff email. So, and I can show that a little later, but um, mm, okay. it has like three main things in it. So the first one is what I call client homework or like your client questionnaire. Um, and that is, I've made it an editable PDF that I send out um, and it'll go through like everything from the mission of their business to like specific design elements that they have to have or can, like definitely can't have. Um, and then to like the tech stuff. So like their log, social login information or, you know, when I'm actually setting the site up. So um, I send that. I send, um, this is actually recently added in, but I created a website copy checklist because I'm not, I'm not a copywriter, but I've been creating sites long enough that I feel like I have a decent grasp on what should be where and what what the standards are. Mm -hmm. So I put together like a one page PDF um, that I send out in the email as well. And it'll go through, it's tailored for service-based industry, like businesses, um, Mm -hmm. because that's typically who my clients are, but it can be applied to anybody, but it it goes through like standard or like, you know, average number of uh, words you want on a page or, Mm -hmm. you know, don't forget to ask for recent testimonials. It's just something that they can literally print off, check off um, as they're going through and for their site. Yeah. It's kind of like then guiding them the, through like, like this is what you need to think about for this page. Um, some kind of guidelines. Cause I feel like copy for a website is kind of like staring at a blank canvas and you're just like, Oh yeah. What do you do here? <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I mean, I'll put together on a Google doc, like I'll lay out once I know the specific pages for their site, but that's all part of the client homework. So like mm-hmm. as they're filling that out, you know, like I'll, I'll help them out, but just to kind of give them that uh, a place to start thinking. Um, and then the last piece is um, something that I think we'll talk, we'll probably talk about a little later, but uh, client portal. So mm. in Squarespace, yeah, in Squarespace, I have a, a personalized portal for all of my clients where they can log in and um, basically get all the details of the project laid out. Um, which is really helpful too, um, so that they don't have to sift through emails. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff that they need to know is right on one page for them. I'm so excited to show everybody uh, your portal. So Megan in a little bit is going to like share her screen and like show how she lays this out and just give you more details about it. And I use a little bit different of a, an approach, but I'm going to show you mine too, just so everybody can um, just see maybe what might feel better for them. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, Okay, so there's a few more things um, as far as like mapping out your process. Um, I do something kind of similar for like the strategy or kind of before you start designing um, phase. And this is specifically for websites that we're talking about just because I feel like branding seems so tame next to websites to me. Yeah, it's a whole (laughs) lot. 
<laughs> like not the branding and like building visual identities doesn't have a lot to go with it, but I just feel like websites are creating brand identities on like crack, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> just There's like on steroids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's kind of really why I wanted to focus on like website design, because if you can do this for this very hairy beast of a project that is always a website project, uh, you can also like filter it into a, a, any other kind of project really. Um, so for me, for my strategy phase, I kind of like to have like a, I'm a very high touch person um, as far as like my clients go. Um, so I'm touching in or like checking in, I guess. Um, and I want them to know like I'm excited about the project and I'm on top of everything. So I'm, I'm trying to like stay in communication with my clients a lot um, before moving to the design phase because during the design phase, I'm like, behind closed doors. I don't want to be bothered. I want to have everything I need to know like up front so I can just like become a mad scientist behind the scenes and just like do crazy stuff and then come out and be like, what do you think? <laughs> um, so I kind of kick off like a, a strategy brainstorm stash where we really talk about everything. Um, and I have what I call a website content doc and that's where I give my clients a bunch of prompts for the pages that are going to go on their site and they answer it and then I turn it into copy, which I'm, this is like going to be a totally separate um, video, but I'm excited to tell people more about that. Um, you kind of were working with me on that project when I was testing that out and I was super, super happy with the results from it. It just made projects so much easier. So that's kind of how I approach that stage of it. Um, the design stage, I feel like that's like pretty, I don't know, do you have like a point or two that you think is like really important to note here? Or I feel um, like that's just so personal, you know, like it depends yeah. on how you design or how you approach design. One, uh, there, I guess there are two quick things. So the first one is, um, after my client sends me my, their homework, um, that's when I have them get started. So like I'll pour through that and then I have them get started on their copy and their imagery portions. Mm -hmm. Um, and while they're doing that, I get a head start on the design process and I build out like the shell of it. So the mm -hmm. skeleton, so I'm building out the pages, I'm adding in the branding, anything like header and footer typically, um, anything that I can do so that when the copy and the imagery come in, I can just go to town. And a mm -hmm. lot of that stuff that is actually really time consuming mm -hmm. um, is done. So that mm -hmm. way I can really focus on the, the content of the site itself. Yeah. Uh, so that's just something that I just make sure that I do um, with my process. But then the other big thing is one thing that I've worked with other designers before or like seen their process. So one thing that I do, I feel like I do differently and I don't remember if, well, you can tell me, but um, typically web designers will send out, they'll build out like the home page and maybe one other page and then send it out um, so that they don't put too much time into building out the entire site. And then if the client hates it, they're SOL. Mm -hmm. uh, I have found it to be, way better for me and actually my clients um, to build out the entire site. Mm -hmm. And that's super risky. Um, so I don't, remind me, do you do one page or do you do the full thing? I don't remember. Um, so I am typically designing on Squarespace that makes it pretty yeah. easy to do that. And I do build out the live site um, yeah. and try to present live sites when I can. I mean, obviously you can't always do that depending on the platform. Right. But I just find that, I mean, obviously you want from page to page to be consistent, but I feel like the homepage is, I don't know. I, just, it, I feel like I, I work so holistically, like I, some, I let something inform this, but then I also let that come back and inform this other thing. So I, that's just how my brain works. Um, so I wish it was a little bit more linear and but I mean, I sincerely wish that my brain worked a little bit more like that, but it doesn't. So, um, so I do it all at the same time. I just think that, and this is something that you had told me when we first started talking was the concept of the one logo that you mm. presented going away from web design when, I hope this is okay to share, when Melanie yeah. 
Yeah, design does um, branding. She or you you send out just one logo concept, and mm -hmm. that was mind blowing to me mm -hmm. um, because typically I would send out like three or four variations, and then mm -hmm. have the client pick and choose. And I actually just just as an FYI this for the first time and the client was like super terrified and I was like it's fine it works great I'm you're terrified. like over there like I'm also terrified but I can't tell you this the first time ever I have sent out I did that and the first time ever that a client has come back with zero edits yes oh my gosh okay well I'm so glad you brought this up because um the credit for this um just idea of one concept for brand identities comes from Jamie. I don't know her. I know her last name, but I don't think I'm saying it right. Starkovich? Spruce Road. That's her design studio. Oh, gosh, yes. she, um, she was like, internet, this is a thing and I'm going to tell you all about it. And I like watched a webinar or something that she did on it a couple years ago. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Cause I love clients not telling me they want 50 changes. And right? um, yeah, so I'll just like explain that really quick in case anybody's interested because it's, it's literally changed the game. So you oh. develop all of your um, ideas and concepts for your, um, your branding or logo clients behind the scenes. And then you as the professional designer pick the one concept that you feel best uh, solves your client's problems. Like this is the best solution and that's how you present it. Um, and then you build out that concept. So you have like multiple logo variations, you have um, a full like branded color palette, you have font recommendations, and then you mock these up in different ways. So you're showing like, this is what it would look like if it was like a, a vinyl decal on a a shop door. This is what a business card would feel like. This is what like social media graphics would feel like. And I love this approach because it gives life to the concept. Um, it's so hard to be like, yes, I see three to five like black and white concepts and I have no idea how this actually feels in real life. And I think that's been the biggest difference is, is you need to like evoke an emotion with the, the presentation because that's what your client's audience is going to have or not have. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a, it's just been a game changer. Thank you, Jamie, <laughs> for telling everybody about that. <laughs> You're changing lives. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, sorry to go totally full circle on this. That mm -hmm. was the, the, that one logo concept was basically what I applied to my web design mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So I approach it in that way where you know, this is the best option. This is why I chose where things go rather than giving them, you know, we could do this um, layout or we could do this layout. Mm -hmm. You don't give, your, you don't give your client too much freedom um, in the sense, oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you, it, it kind of like did this weird cutout, but you're totally fine now. Um, yeah, <laughs> you don't want to... <laughs> You don't want to give your clients like too, too much where they start to become the designer and they mm -hmm. think you want to present yourself in a way where, I mean, you know what you're doing clearly. So show that. So that's kind yes. of what I, that, yeah, that's yep. my design process in a nutshell is like prove you shouldn't have to, but you know what I'm saying? Like prove you have to show, you have to show that you are, are trustworthy and that you yeah know what you're doing. I mean, that's, if you were a consumer or like making a big investment, you would want to see that from somebody. I mean, that's literally all it is. It's just showing that you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, after the design phase, that would be kind of like the refine phase. So we were just kind of talking about that, um, where you're presenting whatever, you know, maybe it's a live site, maybe it's a one page mockup, maybe it's mockups of all the pages. Um, and then you go to the refinement stage where you're really collaborating or partnering up with your client to get that awesome finished product. Mm -hmm. um, and then what are some things that you do like when you're wrapping up? What would you say is like the biggest important thing to do when you're wrapping up a project? Well, okay, so if they're on, speaking just with Squarespace, mm -hmm. if they're already on Squarespace, um, this process goes a lot quicker, but if they're not, I hop on a call with them because I, we have to get their billing information. We got to get domains on there. Mm -hmm. all of that. The, the biggest thing for me is, um, I 
call it at the very end, I do a launch week instead of a launch mm. day. Um, just because with domain transfers and all of that, adding in their billing, getting them on the phone sometimes just takes a while. So rather mm -hmm. than having everything like down to the wire, we spread it out over a week. Um, and then we can actually like hit live whenever mm -hmm. we want. But um, yeah, so I'll, I'll hop on the phone with them and get their billing information and all of that in. And then I, my big thing is, I call it my virtual training. So I let the client decide if they want to do it before we actually launch or after the launch date. Mm -hmm. um, but basically I hop on a Google, like a Hangouts. Mm -hmm. And so it's very similar to this. They, um, except for I share my screen the entire time. And what I'll do is I record the entire conversation, but I'll, um, I will basically walk them through the back end of their site, show them how to do very basic edits because they're not going to need to like code anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but where things are, how to edit things, um, let them ask me questions. Uh, it's about an hour. And then um, at the end of the call, I'll save it as an MP4 and then I'll send them like a recap email of our call, um, basically giving them that video so they can reference it if they have any questions or they forgot how to do something. Mm -hmm. And then I always make sure to ask for a testimonial. Mm -hmm. So um, that's basically my last big thing. Actually, this is a really good, it's my last thing that I, as far as <laughs> direct communication with them is concerned, but I also show up in their mailbox about a week later. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a really good segue. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is perfect. Okay, so yeah. step two. Once yes. you've got your um, kind of your project workflow mapped out, you can sprinkle in special things for your clients that really elevate their experience. Um, little surprises, things that make them feel like you um, really thought about them and were really excited about their project. Like I mentioned, there's a checklist with 15 ideas, but I'd love to just hear from you, Megan, like what your maybe top one or two favorite um, things to do to kind of like surprise and delight your clients. Yeah. So I'll talk like monetary ways, mm -hmm. but keep in mind that all of these monetary, the money that I'm spending on these has been factored into what I'm charging them. So like yes, whether- That's, that's so important like, to note. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if this is not coming out of my pocket. It's all been factored in. Um, but the first thing is at the beginning of the project, the second to the end. So the beginning, um, when I send them that like giant email and it's overwhelming and there's that three page long client homework, whatever it is, <laughs> I send it and I'm like, take a breather, like take a few days, like really digest this. Um, and then the next day I will hop on starbucks.com and I grab that email and I send them like a $10 Starbucks e-gift card. And I have a little note and it's, I have it pre-written already, but I'll have like, you know, like client homework sounds daunting, but here's a little something to get you through it. Like, let me know if you have any questions and cheers or something, whatever I wrote, I don't know. Um, and I shoot that off to them and like people think it's the nicest thing ever. And it is, I mean, it is nice, but it's just, you're starting the project off in a way. My friend related it to kind of like the new girl at the office. So like you're establishing that like friend, you're taking them out for coffee. You're grabbing them a coffee, like, you know, welcome to the office. My name is Megan. Here's how we do things around here. You're starting to build that you trust. It's so them. sweet. <laughs> yeah. I it's love funny. that. Yeah. It, it was a really good analogy. Um, but yeah, you're just you're starting the project off. You're starting to build that trust with them. And mm -hmm. right off the bat, you're showing up in a way that they weren't expecting. And that mm -hmm. you're treating them with, I mean, respect, but also like you're treating them like people don't necessarily treat people like I, guess, I don't mean to make a ten dollar starbucks gift card sound so like spectacular but it, it it does it sets the project off on the right note um it shows that you're organized it shows that you're on top of things um so people love that um, mm -hmm. that's that was a really yeah i love implementing that and um, like how that how little time does that take you i mean oh. it's ten dollars that you factored into the cost of the service that you're providing and you've got that canned email or, you know, something that you customize for it, ready to go, mm -hmm. and then you just buy a virtual gift card. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is, Starbucks comes out with virtual, like, 
design. So you get to like pick your fun design. It's more fun than it is like work, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So if it's like springtime, I'll choose like a springtime one or whatever mm -hmm. that might be. But um, yeah, so that's like the way I show up and surprise my clients in the beginning of the project. And then at the end of the project, um, when all is said and done, so that like I've asked them for a testimonial, we've done our training, all of that. Um, I will send them a client thank you gift. It's kind of like a long-term goal for me to be able to put it together myself, but I actually use a company called BoxFox. Um, I had my intern do a lot of research for me on different client thank you gifts, and it's up to you how much you want to spend. So I spend, I think with shipping, it's like $45 or something like that, which is not a big deal, mm -hmm. especially considering what they're spending. And again, it's factored in. Um, but with BoxBox, Box, they put together like a, you can choose from like their pre-curated boxes, but mm -hmm. the one I do is like their Merci gift box or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like a rifle paper company, like notebook, a really nice pen, a, like a small candle. And then what's cool is you can choose from a bunch of their cards that they have and they will handwrite whatever note you want to say. That's Amazing. So great. And, yeah. And then they put it in like a nice craft box. They tie it with crinkle paper, they tie it with a bow and they ship it out for you. So again, um, I have that, the, what I want to say in the note all written out. Mm -hmm. I already know what I'm set. Like it again, five minutes tops, um, takes me to send it. And, um, that client that I was talking about earlier, the one that was like sending referrals before we even started, she sent me like the nicest email. Like, I can't believe you sent me something. I should be sending you something. Like, this is the best experience. <laughs> yeah. So she actually, yeah. She actually did send me, she's a jewelry maker. So she sent me like um, a hand designed necklace, like a gold necklace. I was like, oh, oh I've never gotten a gift like that before. <laughs> but yeah. So, and there's others like um, uh, for like a cheaper version of this, mm -hmm. you want to spend like 45 bucks. Um, greetable. I use that a lot. Um, if I actually use that a lot with my friends, but if you wanted like a cheaper version, it's like $15 to send. And um, I also was going to say, in case anybody doesn't know this or isn't doing it, you can deduct, I believe it's up to like $25 per mm -hmm. client gift, like mm -hmm. per client. So you can spend more than that, but I believe it's like a $25 max that you can oh, write off per client. I don't know. You should research that. At least that's yeah. what it is in the States in Minnesota. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. I de there's definitely a cap. I just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's either 25 or 50. And I feel like 50 is really high. So 25. Yeah. But regardless, you're building that price in or that the cost of that into your service price. But then you also can use that for like a tax deduction too. Just FYI mm -hmm. for anybody listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that client is obsessed with you. Like, that's what I'm thinking right now. That one client is like your biggest fan. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I, I love so that. Real traffic from, cause like I'm in the footer, right? Like site design by the busy. Mm -hmm. I get so much. It's insane. Like I will, I will just always rave about her. She'll just continue to rave about Aww. me. We're just one happy family. I love that. What about um, you? Like what? Yeah. Not, so those are like monetary ways, but I, mm -hmm. what are like non-monetary ways? Yeah. Um, and so I've kind of done, um, I've done the client gift and I, I really do that. I've always done it for like branding clients, but haven't really done it a lot for website, um, clients. Um, so I've kind of done that before, but I also really like to kind of surprise my clients in ways that they weren't really expecting as far as like the service I'm providing. Um, I think one way that has really helped position me more as an expert in my clients' eyes is kind of doing like mini consults with them or offering like insight or wisdom into like a business tool or like a marketing tactic. Um, something I've just realized over time was my clients were coming to me and being like, what do you think about this? Or, um, you know, I think you use this tool. Give me like a review of it or tell me what you think. And, and I was like, oh, they're doing that because like I had already started doing that with them in other ways. Um, and I think the biggest benefit of it was at least for me, I was like, wow, my clients really trust me. Uh -huh. It's such a great feeling because I've definitely been on the other end of that, um, where I'm like, I can't do anything right for these clients. <laughs> um, so that was like really validating. I felt like I unlocked this thing like, oh, just like be extra helpful 
about things that, I don't know, to me that just make, they, I feel like they were like, wow, Melanie's really thinking about me or they, they, she really cares about like my whole business, not just this one part of it. Um, and it's a good opportunity for designers because when you're designing for other, um, businesses, you obviously need to learn everything you can about them and for your client to feel like you're invested, you know, that's the whole point. And it's really easy to do because literally that's like your, your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you yeah. got to learn as much as possible. Um, so that's just something I like to do. Like, like, Hey, have you thought about this thing? Like I'll come up with ideas for them based off of maybe like a phone call we had or, you know, like we're launching our website. Here's something that you can consider. Like maybe they aren't into email marketing, but you can explain like how it can help their business. If you think that that's something that they could execute. Cause I know email marketing isn't for, you know, isn't for everybody, but that's just one example. Like I, let's yeah. like add more value to your business and I can like kind of lead the way for you. One thing that I found that's been helpful with that. So I love to share, I like I have a resources page on my site, but then I'll make it very specific for my clients too. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that is kind of a double bonus, I guess, is you're helping them. But if it's a service that you would have recommended anyways, um, or you personally use and you love, mm -hmm. um, and they have an affiliate program, mm -hmm. and then they sign up off of your affiliate link, that's uh, just, I mean, depending on, you know, if it's a free month with that service or if mm -hmm. it's whatever, um, then you're getting more money in your pocket too. And you would have shared about it anyways. And that's what I always like to tell my clients too. So I'm very upfront about sharing affiliate links. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, like just letting you know, if you do sign up for this, I might get a little bit like I would have, I might get a little money from this or I might, mm -hmm. I'll get a free month, but I would have shared it regardless or whatever mm -hmm. that might be. And that also applies for, um, like recommending other businesses to them. So mm -hmm. I have a very good friend of mine who does um, some blog writing for me, helps me with, with some of my email marketing. And mm -hmm. I've worked with clients that are like, you know what, I'm in MailChimp. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to automate it. I spent way too many hours. So I'll be like, listen, my friend, my, you know, like my friend, Teresa, um, where I work with her personally, I've, she's worked with many of my clients before. Um, so we'll kind of like, you know, you should contact her basically. So she'll mm -hmm. get clients out of it. She'll refer some clients to me, mm -hmm. but it's a way to help each other out. But then also just keeping in mind, I only recommend if you truly believe that because mm -hmm. if you don't like, you know, Oh yeah, Teresa will be great. And she sucks. Um, which yeah. That's like your, lost. that's like your word that doesn't look good. That's but, your reputation. And then yeah. you're losing your trust. Mm -hmm. So all of that to say, yeah, it's, it, all of these things I feel like we're talking about are like very mutually beneficial to both like the client and you. So whether yeah. that's cutting down on your time or increasing your bottom line or whatever that is, you know. Mm -hmm. Something else I was thinking too is I have clients who are like, do you have an affiliate link for this? They like, they're like, I oh, love yeah. this program and I know everything has like affiliates. Like, do you have a link? I'd love for you to get something from this, some yeah. kind of kickback. So don't be afraid of that if yeah. you are. Um, okay. Let's keep moving on because um, I'm excited for us to like share our screens and like really show some behind the scenes things. Yeah. So let's go into step three, which is create a consistent process. So you think just like mapping it out, you're like, cool, that's it. Now I know my process. <laughs> um, but something that's really going to help you create consistency with it, um, which is going to, uh, you know, that's like kind of the end goal here is like, how can I like create something repeatable that's easy where I don't have to think about it so much. I can just focus on my client and the actual design work. Um, so Megan, you and I both like to use um, templates. Templates, that's oh. the answer to it. Like, so templates for forms and documents, but also like canned emails. Um, and I really also like this because it allows for better um, like expectation management. You know, you can kind of, you can kind of like show clients what to expect up front. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important to the client experience also. Like, if you make an investment in something, you want to know exactly what you're investing in. And these templates just help you as the designer feel more prepared and more organized and gives you like just more tools to be able to do that. Um, okay, so 
Megan, you have some stuff that you want to show us, right? Yeah. So I do, I work, um, wait, how do I share? Um, where are we at? Where are we at? There we go. Um, I work in, can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. Cool. Wait, annotate. I want to get that spotlight. There it is. <laughs> okay. I learned um, something new today. I'm going to have to figure that out when I switch over to my screen. <laughs> so, so I work in Trello. The, literally the biggest reason is because when I had a full-time job, I worked for a tech startup here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we used Trello for our project management. So I just really got to know it. And then when I went off on my own, it's, a. I mean, you can upgrade for you can upgrade to a paid plan, but all, I mean, I don't pay a dime, um, which is nice. So um, I have a board that I call my business blueprint, but I basically will list out like, you can see, like I have my Instagram hashtag group. So like I can just, they're like swipe files basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then all my workflows are listed here, my template text, which I'll go through and then like testimonials, links, whatever that might be. So like, um, just to show you, I break it down super like detailed. So mm -hmm. when I first started trying to create my workflow. And this is that workflow that we talked about in step one, right? Like every yeah. step that you mapped out. You every single step. Flow. And I make it ridiculously detailed. So mm -hmm. like, I'm just seeing if it, um, does it show how many? Okay, yeah, this one has 30 steps. And you're like, 30 steps, a client. Yeah, 30 steps, a client, because, um, <laughs> And this is maybe just because this is something I like to do. Like, have you ever made a to-do list and written down things that were like super easy just so you could cross them off? Oh, yeah. It's okay. like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like a double whammy. Like, it's a, a bonus feature of this because like discovery call schedule, discovery call completed, like all these things like invoice sent, invoice paid. You're like, like oh my God, I'm the most productive human being ever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But basically, like, I will write down, when I first started my workflow, it was way too general. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, design one cent, design two cent, design three cent, final invoice paid, done, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, duh, that's everybody, I mean, I could think of that process off the top of my head. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget any part of the process, especially when I have my clients, like the one I was talking about earlier, that are talking to their friends about their experience with me, like, and then I got a Starbucks gift card, and like, mm -hmm. then Sally Sue signs up with me because Becky Joe said I'm amazing, and she's expecting a Starbucks gift card, and I completely forgot because I'm trying to rem mm -hmm. remember off the top of my head. That's like a red flag in their mind, like, why is why is she not giving yeah, her Yeah, that's so why important. Why is this different? Is she on top of things? Whatever. Um, but yeah, so I have a checklist where I go through absolutely everything, including these like Starbucks card, gift card sent, sent client thank you gift. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it goes through all of that. And then I broke down um, my workflow for a web design client, my workflow for a branding client, and then if I'm doing branding and um, web design. Mm -hmm. So the template text is like all of my emails or anything that I'm like, I'm repeating over and over again, obviously. Mm -hmm. with my clients. I like all the emojis. Oh, yeah. Oh, every, <laughs> email has an emoji. <laughs> every single one. Um, so funny. Yeah. Um, That's a way to like be really consistent though. That's like, so it, it's like, oh yeah, this has an emoji and it must be an email from Megan or <laughs> something. <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, it, like even Starbucks gift card. So like right here, you can see, I can just copy and paste this in when I'm buying a Starbucks gift card, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Um, training video, final thoughts. And let's see if I go in like, okay. So like name, I know to put their name in there. Mm -hmm. um, everything down from like, um, the sign off, everything is included just so that I, again, I have that consistency. Um, mm -hmm. and I just don't forget anything. Um, so that's all, yeah, that's all my template text, um, for emails. I love that. Yeah. And I'm like loving this inside view into Trello because I've actually never used Trello. I use Asana, um, mm -hmm. and like pen and paper <laughs> and Evernote. <laughs> So that was kind of cool to see how that works. Absolutely. Whatever works for you and your business. Like if for the, the beginning of my business, I wrote down everything, like I had to handwrite it or I felt like mm -hmm. I would forget it or I don't know. I feel like that is important though for helping you 
remember it yourself. Like that's how it becomes more automatic, you know? Um, well, speaking of that, I'm going to show, um, my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Great. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find that red. So it's like spotlight. green bar at the top. Mm -hmm. And then you can like, it might say annotate. Yeah, there we go. Hey. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is Dubsado. And um, Dubsado is crazy. I like just wrote a post on it that I'll link to um, so that you can see it. But these are a collection of canned emails that I have. And you can send emails directly inside of Dubsado. And you can kind of see here, like it says, it's like a smart field. So it just auto puts in their name or like here it's a scheduled payment amount. So it just fills in like, oh yeah, like this is, you know, payment reminder past due. So it'll just auto fill like this is um, how much you were supposed to pay yesterday. Bring it on in. <laughs> um, so I also have this inside of Dubsado. Um, and these are templates for pretty much a bunch of just like documents that I have. So here are my contracts, sub agreements. I have um, like mostly I use a schedule A for my sub agreements, but then I have questionnaires here. I have different um, templates for my proposals. And then I have um, a lead capture form that I send out. Um, so I really like Dubsado for that because it really just like, um, lets you create everything up front and then all you have to do is um, customize it and I think that's really important because the the idea is you want this like 80% done you do not need to spend hours and hours on paperwork um, when really what you want to do is get straight to the design work so this kind of just allows you to have um, a more streamlined process it you don't waste as much time the bulk of it's there um, and then I was also going to show this inside of Asana um, so it's kind of essentially the same thing as what, as far as like the layout goes, you have these different yeah. columns for things. Um, so this is, this would be um, like a template for a client that's doing branding and website and marketing items. So like all of the things. So I kind of have um, this prep stage and everything that needs to happen. Here's like everything for the brand identity. Here's everything for website. Um, and so that, that just kind of allows me to have that repeatable process, which is pretty important. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then I'm going to show this in just a little bit, but you can also like, and it looks like maybe you could in Trello too. Can you like assign tasks to clients? Yeah. Do you do that in Trello? I don't. I don't. Okay. I, I, it's um, more for you, like remembering. Mm -hmm. But if I, I have. Um, oh yeah. I know that you don't because you're going to show something really cool in the next step. Yeah. No, I, I do assign, um, like I, this has been the year of like building out a team for me, which I was not expecting. Fun. <laughs> yeah. I have my intern on Trello. So like I have a board for her, um, just to handle to do's and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. I can find things to her. Um, but I've also worked with a designer, another designer on a pro one of like my projects with mm -hmm. one of my clients. Um, and so I was able to assign things to her, um, in regards to that client too. So then it would kind of ping her, make sure that we're on the same page. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I, as far as like assigning or having other people on Trello, I really like it for like inter team communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Especially with how you, um, actually we'll just go into this next one, especially with how you like set up the, like keeping your projects on track. Um, yes. Okay, so step four, this is, Use a client portal or project management system to keep your projects and clients on task. And this is important because um, this is part of that client experience. Like if, if projects fall behind and you start nagging your client or they, they forgot that something was due because like you kind of seem unorganized or they just, I don't know, I like to think about projects as like, you know everything about what's going on in a project, but this is your client's like first time going through your process. So you have to lay everything out for them. And using a client portal or um, like a tool like Asana um, or any kind of project management system, helps your clients like understand what all is going on, what they need uh, as far as like 
what do they need to contribute to the project? Um, so I think everybody's really going to love this stuff. So I guess I'm going to just go back to Asana really quick because with this, what you can do is you can click into, well, actually, can you see this little icon right here? Yep. Okay, so you could click that, and then if your um, client has already been like brought into Asana, then you could just type in their name. Like I'm gonna type in Leah, she's a designer I work with, but say she's my client. Um, you could just type that in and it's gonna assign it to her. So she probably just got an email that was like, <laughs> <laughs> you just got assigned a strategy call. Um, but say you haven't invited your client, you could just type in their email, you know, so. Perfect. Okay, you're getting, no, you're not. Okay, so it's easy to assign tasks. So what would happen is your, your client comes into Asana and you can assign tasks and they can see clearly like, oh, this is Melanie, this is me, there I am. And then what's even better is you can assign due dates. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of click through the calendar and if your strategy call is set for a certain day, you just like click that and you can even do time. So you can do, um, like add a due time. So if it needs to be, it. if it's at 10 o'clock, you know, in the morning, there you go. So I love Asana because um, they're going to get emails and notifications like, oh, you have a task due or you had like a task that was due yesterday that isn't complete. And when something is complete, you mark it, you know, and then it kind of grays itself mm -hmm. out. So you get this as the project goes, you can see like, and you can even set it so that completed tasks just are gone. I believe it's view completed. No, you view just incomplete. And so everything that gets complete kind of goes out. Um, and I think this is really great for clients because then they can see that progress. They can see what's kind of coming up on the horizon. They can see if they missed a task. Um, and this is something that I was actually like really reluctant to bring into my business because I thought, I don't really want my clients to have to learn one more thing. And I don't want to be that one asking them to learn one more thing. Um, because as, you know, as like a designer, I really want to just take care of everything for my clients and I want design to be really easy. Um, so I was very, very hesitant to like start a project management tool. Um, and what really kind of got me to come around to it is why wouldn't a client jump on board with something like this? if you're telling them that's what they need to have a good successful project with you, Absolutely. you know, like, why wouldn't you do that? If, if somebody was like, Hey, I'm a hairstylist and I need you to like prep your hair this way, like make sure it's like not gunky or whatever, or we can wash it. I don't know. Just like, like, like if anybody's advising you for anything like in their wheelhouse, um, why wouldn't you do it? Because they're going to tell you, like they're telling you you're going to get a better result from it. So that was just a little PSA for anyone who <laughs> maybe was like hesitant, like I was to, to use one of these tools. But Megan, let's look at your screen because this is really cool. <laughs> okay. Let me show you. So you're not using like um, a project management tool or anything. This I is not. Yeah. Wait, I can't, I have to move this. Sorry. One sec. Okay. Yeah. So I have, there we go. Ah. Um, I actually create, so yeah, I don't, I don't have a client portal within like Asana or within Dubsado or anything like that. But what I've done is created like a quasi portal on my Squarespace site. So I basically made this client portal template and then with every client, I'll just copy the page and duplicate it. Um, and it's password protected. So um, I assign, I usually just do like the first name of the client um, as the password. So it's easy for everybody to remember. Um, but I will create uh, like fill in the details of this, which does not take long um, on the back end of Squarespace and send it over to them. But basically um, what it is, is I will lay out um, our project schedule, our payment schedule, like when those are actually due. Um, and then like major um, uh, 
um, important like links or references or anything like that. So their signed contract, their homework, once it's completed, I'll upload it here. That website ch uh, copy checklist that I was telling you about earlier, um, just so you don't have to sift through the, their email to find it, it's right here. And then their Google folder, which I have is like my hub for uploading um, everything. So uh, that's like the direct link to their shared Google folder. And then my progress tracker, which is, um, yeah, this is how I talk. It's essentially <laughs> the project schedule, but broken down into four main stages. So it's kind of that whole like, I just, I call it something different than how you mm -hmm. do it, like prep, setup, building, editing, and launch. Um, but it shows, again, like on a more visual level, um, where we are in the process, what pieces are part of that process, mm -hmm. and then what they, what's coming up down the road or down the line. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time I forgot to change, these are literally just images that I'll switch out, and I forgot to change one of the images and my client was like, you haven't updated my client portal. And I, was like, right. I need to do that. <laughs> Um, so that's you have that on your workflow, you should say. <laughs> I really should add it. That's, oh my, that's genius. <laughs> yeah, but that's what, that's why those are so great because it's like, it's like, did you forget something that yeah. you don't need to? Okay, just put it in the workflow. It's like not a big deal. You know, we're all humans. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. that's why it's there. Yes. <laughs> cool. My portal updates. I'm like totally writing this down. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, Client, my clients love it because it's personalized to them. So they, it's just that extra piece, but then also everything is in one nice hub for them. Mm -hmm. um, anything that they need to know about the project itself. And then um, if for some reason I have to move this, all right, oops. Mm -hmm. Um, if for some reason they don't remember my email or something like they can just shoot me an email here mm -hmm. too. You can alternately have like a form that they can fill out, but we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, um, yeah. So this is something I'm assuming you put in your like welcome email, like for the, that long one that you were kind of talking yes. about. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was the third thing. I don't think we ever touched on that, but yeah, mm -hmm. at the bottom, um, I have their, like, I, I basically give them access to their client portal mm -hmm. um, where all of that's set up because I have all the information now. So yeah. Wow. Thank you for showing us that. I'm always like, I'm always like, is it okay to like see exactly how you do things? And all my designer friends are the nicest ever. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, like, it's, <laughs> like or it, it's, it's just a way to see how people do their design process. And it's not necessarily how everybody is going to, you know, design this way or work with their clients this way. I have this like crazy. Oh, I love it. Just like I love that little hair. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, I don't can see what I have going on in the back. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always just really good information because like maybe how one designer does something isn't perfect for you, but it's it's a place to help you get started, which I know is I'm a self-taught designer, so that's literally oh, how I built my face was off of very generous designers who just were pretty transparent about their processes. So thank you for doing that. I, and I thought, I think that that kind of stuff is really fun too. So, oh, yeah. um, okay. So those are the four major steps, but I want to just leave some quick bonus tips because it's like, okay, you've done all this, but now like, now what? So the first bonus or bonus tip, I guess, is make sure that you're showcasing your process. So, mm -hmm. It's one thing to develop it for yourself, but um, talking about it, I found is how people get to know you and how you can have like better fit leads when people do approach you. It's like they've already learned about your process because you're talking about it on social media, or maybe you have a blog post that outlines it, or maybe you have a service guide that outlines it, or maybe you do like blog post case studies where you walk through your process as a blog post, but like specifically for a project. Um, and I think that's really important because people need to be able to like imagine themselves doing something. And when you can get the idea in someone's head that they're like walking through the process, you're that much more likely to book work, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so once you like outline all of this, tell everybody about it. <laughs> that's my, my first tip. Um, do you, do you like have any specific ways that you do this? So I have a blog post on it. And then um, on my site, I have, 
my process mm -hmm. on there. So mm -hmm. I, I break it down like a timeline. Mm -hmm. um, but then that client, the, the discovery call is also where. Yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I feel like super redundant every time I say, especially that day that I had like five freaking calls. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but yeah. And then that way, like, um, they know what to expect if they sign on with me. Um, mm -hmm. and then if they have questions about anything, um, like I allow two edits. So like, mm -hmm. what does an edit include? I can kind of break that down too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, um, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is really important. Um, because that, that call you're you finally got this person who's interested in working with you like one-on-one -on -one. it's a great opportunity to make sure it's crystal clear and to make sure that this person doesn't have any questions about it right. um it's also a really great way to qualify your leads like will this person be a good fit for me um and the way you can tell is are they questioning or kind of like oppositional to things that you're saying are they like brushing off like that you use a project management tool or are they kind of like wondering if you are more lenient on your timeline? Um, yeah. You know, none of these things are bad to ask, but they are indicators and like information you can use to make decisions about mm -hmm. like, do I want to bring this project on into my um, business or not? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a really good opportunity to talk about that during the discovery call um, for many, many reasons. So thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you can use that if someone does have questions about like your process, that's information you can use to make sure you're, you're even more clear in the places that you are talking about it. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you have like a social media post the next day that was like, I was on a call yesterday with a potential client and I got this question. Let's talk about it. Like you can use these things like in your marketing um, and it humanizes you and it's educational. Yep. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is I think really, really important is make sure that you're refining along the way. But more importantly, make sure that you're staying confident in yourself while doing that. Because that's just naturally a part of the process. You plan, you prepare, you implement, and then you like set it out into the wild. And then you're kind of like, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> because, it, because it could work with one client because they're a specific type of person. But you might bring another like client into your business and you find that you need to like tweak things or accommodate in another way. Um, and I just want to make sure everybody knows that's not a reflection on them as a person or a business owner or a designer. It's just a part of the process um and to feel good about that like you just you just got more information to make the next project that much more successful and more fun for you and the client um so i just want to make sure that everybody's like feeling good about themselves because i feel like as business owners no matter what stage of business you're at um you can kind of slip into that like i'm the worst <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you know, I, I think that it's super important to continue to refine your process, no matter, like you said, no matter what stage you're at. But then if you're also in the beginning stages and even not, so like I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm in the beginning stages of my business. I feel like I have like a really good flow. I have like a really good process, I guess. Mm -hmm. But to not, somebody said this to me that you don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter 10. Mm -hmm. so like, Sally Sue, I don't know why she's the name. I like Sally Sue. <laughs> Whatever. Um, might be like killing it. And she's just getting like, you know, her process is super sound and she knows how to target each one of her clients. That comes with time mm -hmm. and it's not perfect. Like she might be showing that it's perfect, but it's not. And like, she's making mistakes and that that's because she's human. And so that's something that I tell myself too, is just make sure to not compare where I'm at in my business and my process to somebody else that's had years ahead of me. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to either of us. Mm -hmm. Um, and just knowing that like there's, when you, when you have your own business or you're an entrepreneur, you're constantly taking risks, right? Yes. So you took a risk to leave your job. You took a risk that, you know, you're not, you're, you're going to be able to pay rent this month, let's say, but you also have to take risks in the steps in your process or in, as you're building, you know, 
your workflow or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's many risks throughout the entire thing. So I like to look at it as instead of a risk as like um, research. So mm -hmm. I'm testing things out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't and refining based off of that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I think that's like natural to do. I just feel like the web design process is so intricate um, that it can feel kind of overwhelming and yeah, it, it's just, you know, it's just a part of it. You like learn more as you go. Um, oh, and, and kind of being willing to experiment brings about more confidence because you yeah. even like, even when something fails, I'm like, I have more information now. I like have this like parameter I know to not yeah. go towards <laughs> and I love it. I mean, especially like when you're starting a business, I feel like the first year or two, like just feels like a bunch of experiments, <laughs> you know? Um, Okay, there's this really good Brene Brown quote that I want to say. Just oh, I, yeah. I freaking love Brene Brown. Okay, vulnerability is the strongest measure of courage there is. It's showing up and being seen without being able to know the outcome. And I think that that is so, like, being a business owner, you're, you're vulnerable all the time. And, like, you're out there showing people what you're doing, and you're trying to be excited about it, and you just don't know. But I don't know. That really, like, no, I, I'm, I'm so glad you shared that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think, I don't know, I think that's why it's so important to get together and talk with other business owners too, because like you and I know that that's like a super normal thing. Like it's a scary thing that's actually really beneficial to lean into. Um, mm -hmm. but when you're not used to talking to other business owners, it can kind of, you know, you feel like you're in this like little world to yourself, but it's actually like amazing work what you're doing. And I want to, I want people to talk about that more. <laughs> the confidence that comes with just like putting yourself out there and doing the hard work. Um, okay. So I, I think that's probably it. We've, we've had a lot of like good talking points with this um, and kind of really got in the trenches with our process and, and how it relates to the client experience. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'll just do one more reminder about the download bundle. So you're going to get the process roadmap that helps you clearly mop, mop out, <laughs> map out your process. Um, the checklist for 15 ideas that you can kind of scatter into that process that your clients are going to love and it's going to help you get more referrals or book more ongoing work and just make your projects a lot more fun. Um, and then those canned emails for um, all kinds of fun stuff. So that initial service inquiry, your welcome email and getting paid. Two different ones for getting paid. <laughs> um, Okay. Well, thank you so much, Megan, for um, talking to me about all of this and showing uh, the behind the scenes stuff. That was so generous of you. And I know I walked away with some, some fun stuff. I'm, I might have to play with Trello now. Oh, it's so fun. <laughs> also, like shameless not plug, it's not an affiliate link. If you're interested in Trello, <laughs> Trello, uh, uh, who makes it? I don't, I can't think of it. Okay. Trello for business.com. Mm. like it is a 20 it's a 30 dollar course i think and it was if i think creative collective yeah literally the best 30 dollars i've spent in my business and oh wow like, oh my gosh it's amazing they give you like um templates like templated boards that you can literally just copy oh it's great mm, yeah i've heard of that but i've never used it because i'm like i'm already on asana but the people that yeah. have taken that are like holy shit, this is the best. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. So yeah. I can leave a link for that too. Um, okay. Well, um, that's it. If anybody has any questions or like is wondering about something specific we talked about, just comment and let us know and we'll answer it for you. But otherwise, thank you so much, Megan. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Have a good day, everybody.